I wrote a review for Mafia 3 on Forbes, but as usual, I figured I'd bring it to, or bring my concepts to, the YouTube crowd. Check out my review of Mafia 3. The storyline for Mafia 3 is like a mix of Mississippi burning, a time to kill, dead presidents, and Carlito's way. It's ambitious, it's controversial, and it's really bold. The uh, protagonist in the movie, if that's what you want to call it, or in the game, if that's what you want to call it, is Lincoln Clay. And this is a guy who has a story that is a classic one of revenge, but it's a little bit unique and it's a little different than just being a plain revenge story. You got character complexity and you got heavy, heavy, racial themes clay is biracial and he's an orphan who was raised by a man named sammy who was the head of the black mob in new bordeaux which is a fictional recreation of new orleans the story takes place in 1968 although there are some flashbacks and it's pretty much when clay has returned from vietnam ultimately his surrogate father who is sammy and his family are killed by the italian mob the Italians are led by Sal Marcano and he's basically he betrays the black mob. He kills them all, tries to kill Clay, but thinks he has him killed, but he doesn't actually kill him. That bit of the story was revealed uh, in way before the game itself was released. So I won't go any further into the story to keep from spoiling it for anyone who hasn't had a chance to get their hands on it as of now. But I will say that this is a well-told story and it's easily one of the most compelling journeys I've come across in any video game. Now, just as easily, it's the most decadent and depressing. If you're reading or watching this and you're wondering if you should let your child play it, my answer would be no. The themes, the language, the graphic violence, the mood of the game, they just make you feel like, wow, I am in a really dark and dank type of a environment or an atmosphere. I've played a lot of games that were, you know, that were rated M17, and I've never felt the way I felt playing Mafia 3. It takes things to a totally different level. It's more than language, it's more than sex. It's just really rough, all right? Now, the characters themselves, the situations and the vibe, are realistically negative so especially right now we got so much going on in the world with racial injustice and racial issues the theme of this game comes off a little probably a little heavier than it would uh, if this were another time if you're looking for a good guy <laughs> you good luck because there's not there isn't a straight protagonist because even clay himself is an anti-hero uh, you'll get to know most of these main characters because the character development is so good. But you're going to find it's hard probably for you to root for anybody unless you're just rooting for the guy you're controlling. Uh, this might all sound like I'm down on the game, but that's anything but. I know that the developers here, they were looking for and going for this type of a feel because it is a really tough situation and it's a really tough story to tell. So it just it was clear you know that they had to go this route if they were going to tell the story the way they wanted to tell it this is a beautiful game the character design the facial animations the way they emote the lighting the textures and overall style are really kind of on another level without such realistic models and the perfectly synced mouth movements with the voices the layered story wouldn't have been as effective as it is the cutscenes are actually even better than the ones in FIFA 17's The Journey, and I thought that that was the best that I had seen in regards to cutscenes. The serious and tragic story is told in a way that will make you forget you're playing a video game from time to time. The visuals, the direction, and script make it all the more authentic. The map design is just as good. Now, New Bordeaux comes alive with some appropriately dank looking slums, the bright, more affluent areas, and the jaw-dropping shadows almost in every aspect of the game. Now, there are a few glitchy areas where water looks funny, but perhaps those things will be addressed in a patch. One of the most important parts of the visual package for any open-world game is its scaling. 
when you're driving down the road, it's ideal if you can see the details of the streets and buildings that are far ahead without them kind of popping into focus once you come into or within a certain distance. I've seen better examples of scaling, to be quite honest, in other open world games. Now this isn't a major issue for Mafia 3, but it is something that you'll notice quickly, especially if you're used to playing open world games. Now as good as this game looks, it sounds even better. You get crackling rocks under the tires of the vintage vehicles as they're turning on bumpy pavements. As I mentioned, the voice acting is great and the soundtrack is perfectly curated. It is 1968 in every way, shape and form. The stuff that comes on the radio is, is awesome, as well as certain music that is played during certain uh, cinema scenes or cutscenes that kind of propel you into the next aspect of the story is really really good so whoever chose the the sound and the music track and the soundtracks for certain areas of the game did a great job now clay will find himself in some pretty hairy situations when we turn when it comes to gameplay uh, and that's with other members of organized crime and even the police so angling and fighting your way to safety or positioning yourself for an assassination is a rewarding experience Games like Mafia, they need to have a stellar combat and aiming system if they're going to be a classic release. The returns are a little mixed though in this regard for Mafia 3. The aiming isn't horrible, but it's definitely not ideal. The crosshairs, to me, for my personal taste, were a little bit too loose. I did like the melee and the stealth kills, uh, even though the mechanics of them is pretty standard, but they're still pretty fun to pull off when you sneak up on a guy or if you jump out to grab and take out a guy from cover. All of that still works pretty well. For the most part, the gun battles consist of shooting, hiding behind cover, and repeating that short series of action until you killed everybody around. You have the opportunity of whether or not you're going to try to take out every mission in a stealthy way or just go in guns blazing or you can do a little bit of a mixture of both. So it's kind of up to you to, to decide how you're going to complete the mission or if you're going to if you got to take someone out or you got to retrieve an item. You get to decide how that's going to take place, which is always a good thing. Now, it can get a little repetitive, but it's entertaining enough to keep you pushing forward and through the story, which is the real star here. That's unless you allow yourself to be preoccupied with your increasing amount of freedom in the open world. You get a lot of tools and you can use those tools like entail sight and the other stealthy tactics to finish the job a, a bit cleaner. But it's inevitable you're actually at some point you're going to have to win your share of firefights. Now let's talk about driving because driving is always a major part of any open world title and it feels pretty smooth in Mafia 3. You won't struggle to drive sensibly if that's what you want to do. In most open world games, driving takes on this crazy thing where it's you have to show an incredible amount of patience just to drive like a normal person. It's almost as if you're being pushed to drive crazy. Mafia 3 does a great job creating the balance in this instance. In many ways, the action sequences uh, remind me a little bit of Just Cause 3. Only Clay doesn't have as many crazy over-the-top gadgets as Rico Rodriguez, and he's not near invincible like the Just Cause 3 protagonist. That slight bit of realism that you get in Mafia 3 actually helps to keep the characters more human. Clay and uh, Rodriguez's tasks are similar when it comes to the mechanics of completing the missions. The checklists don't vary too much from area to area or from boss to boss. In Mafia 3, you're, even, you're either order, uh, murdering a boss, interrogating someone with the option of having them work for you, or you can just take them out after you get the information you need, or in some a few instances, you actually have to retrieve an item. If you recruit or force someone to work with you, there are benefits to those partnerships. Some of them are monetary, others will unlock the access to in-game perks, such as on-call arms dealers and a flunky in charge of delivering your vehicles from your garage. Now, very few missions are memorable though. Uh, the assassination of the Haitian drug lord Baca stands out to me the most, kind of reminded me of a scene from Belly. But I mostly remember the cutscenes in between the missions. The early missions don't feel as much like open world adventure. Uh, the action is very pointed and the missions are obj and objectives are pretty clear. 
to be honest, that's when the game is at its best, in my opinion. The huge sprawling world of New, Bord New Bordeaux was a large undertaking by the development team, but once you progress deeper into the story and begin to have more free reign of the city, the game partially loses its way. The complete toolbox of options such as the wiretaps, the consigliere, informants, and the capture enemies turned partners, they start to make things more complex and I might even call it a little bit crowded. Part of the appeal of Mafia 3 is its tradition rich and highly detailed recreation of the late 1960s vibe, but I believe that that could have been captured in a stage based format similar to what we see in Uncharted. That approach would have also allowed the story to still shine through the way it does. The open world concept sounds great and can be amazing when it fits properly, but not every big story is best suited for a chainless adventure. I applaud the concept of opening up more to world and options in a piece by piece style because this was done to help keep you focused on the story. However, the deeper you get into the game, the more you begin to feel conflicted. Do I take time to explore the world or continue to uncover the layers of this increasingly intriguing story? It can actually be a little bit frustrating. Now is the gameplay fun? At times, yes. Are there major structural issues with the combat system? No, but there's definitely an internal struggle that can be felt by the game. Hangar 13 goes full bore into its single player campaign. There's no online multiplayer or other mini games. I don't really have an issue with that approach. There's at least three planned expansions for the title, and if you got the season pass, then you'll automatically get access to them. Once you play through the initial story, which will likely take the average gamer somewhere between 18 to 24 hours to get through, there's nothing left to explore besides the new emissions and the stories that may come with the DLC. You could obviously blow off some steam by terrorizing people in the open world, but the value in that depends on how goal-driven you are as a gamer. Perhaps an option to play through a game from a different character's perspective would have been interesting. A co-op option might have also added to the experience. The bottom line though, have you ever listened to a hip hop album that was laced with some great production? I mean the beats were just crazy, but the MC's lyrics just or their delivery just were kind of hit and miss. They weren't horrible, but they weren't stellar either. Mafia 3 is the video game equivalent to that analogy. The people in charge of the presentation, the script, and the story have done a bang up job. Clay's quest for revenge is enough to keep your attention throughout. If you approach Mafia 3 as an interactive journey, then you probably won't have any issues with it overall. But if you're looking for a fully fleshed out title that's going to be equal to Grand Theft Auto 5, then Mafia 3 could come off as a shallow release. I'm kind of in the middle, but I'm leaning more towards the former. The story and the visuals are easily the strength of the game, and the gameplay isn't flawed enough or repetitive enough to kill my vibe. This might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if you love a good character study and are in search of a gameplay mechanics that break new ground in innovation and control, this is the one you need to own. My rating for Mafia 3 is an 8.1.